Hey Flavor Family, what is up? It is Art and Bobby back in the grocery store, Whole Foods to be exact, on the north side of Chicago for a video all about cheese today. We did a cheese review last year, but there's so much information about cheese, I wanna do part two because there's fresh cheese in the case like this. But the plant-based cheese section is exploding. There's some crazy stuff over there, but not all of it's good or good for you, so I wanna navigate that with you. I wanna tell you about nutritional yeast, AKA vegan Parmesan. I wanna tell you about uh, cottage cheese and more. There's so much cheesy information. Let's dive right into it here. So let's start with something a lot of people don't talk about. It's goat cheese. And I actually love goat cheese because I'm somewhat dairy intolerant. I don't eat too much dairy because it upsets my stomach. Goat cheese does not upset my stomach too much because the cool thing about goat cheese is that the fat globules are smaller and it makes it easier on your tummy to digest. So you can get goat cheese in a log like this, which is great for appetizers and stuff. But if you're a feta cheese lover, look for feta cheese that's made with goat. This is, I think, uh, a cow's milk one here. But look for goat feta. It's just so much easier on the tummy. And we've talked about this before, but what do you guys do when you buy like a feta cheese? Do you buy a block in brine? This is like a brine here. Or do you buy the crumbles like this? Be honest, leave a comment down below, right? The thing is, I know this is more convenient, but if I were to read the ingredients right here, you'll see that there's potato starch. And the only reason they're adding it, they tell you, is to prevent caking. And I understand that, right? You don't want a big clump in there. The problem is potato starch, that we'll talk about with shredded cheese in a second, is bad in terms of texture and meltability. You don't really melt feta as much, but it's gonna have a coating on there that just has that chalkiness on the tongue. You don't really want, you really wanna crumble it yourself, and it's not that hard. Pick up the block and crumble it in your fingers. You're gonna like it a lot better, and it's cheaper, right? Now, come here for a second, Art. For all my British fans out there, can you please tell me exactly what clotted cream is? I understand you spread it on crumpets like they do here, but what really is it? I mean, the ingredients are just, well, okay, it doesn't help me. Pasteurized clotted cream, but is it just like cooked, reduced cream? All my British fans, leave a comment down below, please. Uh, another thing, just a pet peeve of mine, I saw this out of the corner of my own eye. This is, mascarpone everyone pronounces that mascarpone there's no r there it's a mascarpone and i love it because it's like italian cream cheese and it's richer and thicker and so delicious but it's mascarpone not mascarpone sorry i got a little giada there and then we come over to shredded cheese something i really don't buy because it's a little more expensive than grading it yourself but you can pick up any kind of cheese you want here and you can usually see it through the uh, window here, but in case you can't see it, you just look at the ingredients here and you'll see it's got cellulose. So cellulose is actually uh, wood pulp, totally harmless, right? A little kind of weird to think there's wood pulp in there, but they don't want this clumping into a big uh, mass. This is even more important than the feta because when you have this with cellulose, it does 100% guaranteed affect the meltability of the cheese because that cheese is gonna have that coating. When you melt it on pizza or whatever, it doesn't melt as well as just doing like this. Buy the block, do it yourself. It's cheaper and it's gonna be a nice even melting. Now, like we talked about in the other video, when I do eat cheese, I make sure it's grass fed. So something like this Organic Valley, it's expensive, but it's not only, uh, grass-fed but it's organic it's expensive though it's $8.99 but the cool thing about grass-fed cheese you can find it everywhere these days you can get it at Aldi Trader Joe's has it and worst comes to worst if you can't find a hundred percent grass-fed cheese this is Kerrygold right and it says right here milk from grass-fed cows and it is right it's like that cow munching away on grass there but it's not a hundred percent grass-fed this is a hundred percent grass-fed here this one's about 80% of the time, because we've talked about this many times. Kerrygold's in Ireland. Ireland abides by Irish dairy law, so it gets inclement in the uh, winter, and they can't always feed it grass because of the weather, so they do feed it grains. I'm yet to confirm whether it's GMO or non-GMO. Fingers crossed. Once again, if you know, leave a comment down below. I'm hoping it's non-GMO, but still, 80% of the time, I'd rather have this. I know there was a lawsuit against Kerrygold for claiming that. You guys, that's still better than any <clears throat> regular cheese, because when you pick up something like I don't want to single out any brands, but <clears throat> if this were a conventional dairy cheddar cheese, 
that's cows that eat an exclusive 100% diet of grains. Not just grains like soy and corn, Monsanto GMO corn and soy, and we really don't want that. Plus when it's organic, at least it's grass-fed, pasture-raised four months of the year. When it's 100% grass-fed like this one, it's only living on pasture, only eating grain. It's better for the environment, the farmer, and for you because the nutritional profile of organic and better yet, grass-fed cheese is better than conventional dairy. Think about it, it really is worth the money. If you can just go organic, that's a big step up right there. So we look up at other cheeses here. And the interesting thing about something like aged cheese is like Parmesan. I don't see it right here. It's probably around the corner. Parmesan is actually a cheese I eat a lot of. I actually like its sister cheese, Pecorino Romano, which is a sheep's milk cheese from Rome, because it's an aged cheese. When you have aged cheeses, I like to pick it up here somewhere. Let's see. <clears throat> Matt, you stay there for a sec. All right, this went over the cheese monger counter. This is Parmigiano Reggiano, and I eat cheeses like this, or Pecorino Romano, because they're basically no lactose. All the lactose gets eaten away during the aging process by the bacteria. Love this stuff, but I wouldn't buy the shredded kind. Once again, even though there's no anti-caking agents on this, because the cheesemonger did it for me, it's more expensive. I'd rather just do it myself, right? So, another cool thing here about snacking cheese for your kids is that you really want to go organic. There's not too many grass-fed snacking cheeses, but you can get organic string cheese these days. And that's just going to be miles better than the kind of string cheese that Art and I grew up on. And here's the cool part. I know a lot of kids are dairy intolerant. <clears throat> There's goat cheese sticks here that are kind of like uh, string cheese. But once again, it's that low, smaller fat ovule and much easier to digest. So I'm super, super excited about that. <clears throat> so that's kind of a quick rundown here of this section of the cheese. Let's go explore because there's so many cheese options here. And let's just say that you're vegan, right? And you want that Parmesan flavor. Let me just show you over here, Art. This is nutritional yeast. And the vegans call it vegan Parmesan because it has a salty, nutty flavor like uh, Parmesan would. And you can put this over pasta. You can put it over anything you want. I swear by this stuff. It's really good. I make a uh, vegan ricotta using soaked cashews, and I blend it up with lemon, nutritional yeast, olive oil, salt, and pepper, and some hot liquid. It's one of the best things ever, right? But let's go over to the other cheese case. I want to talk about vegan cheese and cottage cheese, because here at Whole Foods, they have next-level cottage cheese. Okay, here's where the vegan cheese lives at Whole Foods. And I'm gonna go straight for what I have found in my experience is the best vegan cheese. It's this brand right here, Voix Life. The flavor and texture of this stuff is fantastic. It's mozzarella shreds. Look at the ingredients. For a vegan cheese, it's very clean. The only issue is all vegan cheeses, repeat all vegan, will have mozzarella flavor. So a little bit of natural flavor. At least it comes from vegan sources, but that's unavoidable. So if you're dairy free or plant-based, you can't avoid that. But everything else here is pretty clean. The cornstarch is non-GMO here. So I'm all about that. I found that Daya doesn't melt as well. Um, the Follow You Heart isn't my favorite. Now I will say, one of the most next level products I've ever seen is Kite Hill, uh, ricotta cheese. Oh, where is it? Oh, here it is. This is crazy, guys. Come here. Look at this. Right. This is plant-based ricotta cheese. And what's so cool about it is the texture is just like real ricotta cheese, and the flavor is literally spot on. Ingredients are clean as can be. Now, it's expensive. It's, look at this, $9 for eight ounces, so it's $18 a pound. But here's what I found, you guys. Check this out. Whole Foods is an investor in Kite Hill, which by default, I think that means Amazon is an investor in Kite Hill. And so a lot, or I don't say a lot, some of the Whole Foods carry this in the bulk section by the cheese, and it's $12 a pound instead of an 18. We eat this a lot, it's fantastic. So ask your, uh, your cheese section over at Whole Foods if they have this or ask around. This stuff is amazing. And if you want a cheese spread that is plant-based but clean as a whistle, a Leaf Cuisine here, makes peppery jack. Look at these ingredients, you guys. There's no filler. 
There's no gums. I mean, are you kidding me? They're actually adding bacteria to give it like a, a little bit of a fermented or like a cultured flavor. That this, this brand is really, really cool. And then we look around, there's more and more stuff. Miyoko's makes some crazy stuff. She makes this, uh, I assume it's a she. I know it's Japanese. Can anyone confirm it's a she? Vegan Mots. Look at these ingredients here, right? Cashew based coconut oil, a little bit of tapioca, a touch of cultured sugar. But look at these ingredients, very clean. I mean, this stuff did not exist. You guys, Art and I are products of the 80s and 90s. We had soy cheese back then. That was it. You want alternative milk? Soy milk. You want alternative cheese? Soy cheese. GMO, low quality, not the kind of stuff you want to eat. So that's really cool. And if I just come over here, I like cottage cheese. I mean, raise your hand. I know you might think of like your grandma eating it out of the center of a, a cantaloupe in Florida, like my grandmother did. But man, once again, we still want to get organic. These guys here, good culture make this organic whole milk cottage cheese. It's pasture raised, but it doesn't say grass fed anywhere. I wish it was 100% grass fed. But when you have the choice, you guys, of getting low fat cottage cheese or whole milk cottage cheese, which one would you get? Whole milk, right? And that's true with yogurt and regular milk because this is quality dairy. In whole milk lives omega-3 fatty acids and other good stuff you want. You don't want to skimp on this kind of fat. This is good fat for your body. Also, Nancy, I wish it was full fat, but she makes a probiotic rich cottage cheese. And what's cool about these cottage cheese, look at the ingredients. There's no guar gums, there's no emulsifiers. When you go to the cheaper uh, cottage cheese, like look at the ones you normally get at the grocery store, they have a lot of those emulsifiers and nasty stuff you don't really want in there. And this is a, uh, I think it's Iowa, Kelowna Supernatural. It's organic, it's low fat. Oh, they might have their full fat. But once again, the ingredients here are absolutely fantastic. So that's what you wanna look for when you look for this kind of dairy. Organic, ideally whole fat, but none of those nasty fillers and stuff like that. So you guys, tons of stuff, like we said, when it comes to cheese, when, whether it's plant-based or regular dairy, I just want you to know what you're buying so you can put the best possible ingredients in your body. But like, subscribe, share. The only way we'll keep growing the way we have in the month of January is by you spreading the love. Uh, we got two more videos going below us right now. But my man Art and I will see you very soon. Until then, we say unto you like we always do, hashtag, Keep on cooking, mad love and peace.